Hey guys, what to do, of course, and today we're covering the Colbert. Okay, now, this is an interesting cruiser indeed. Um, first off, go for modifications. Aiming systems is recommended. AA guns mod is not a bad shout as well. Uh, the guns, pretty meaty AA, main guns are dual purpose because they're 127s. Uh, aiming systems though is what I go for, but A mod is pretty spicy. That's the A mod here. Pretty spicy numbers, not bad. Now, second mod, definitely in it, definitely, sorry to say, propulsion mod, because the thing does not accelerate very quickly. I understand people going for an agility build. Even then, I would 100% go with propulsion mod. Concealment is probably best. You could go with rudder, and rudder's not a bad shout, but realistically, getting that concealment down is such a nice thing. Plus, the thing coming 5% fire dispersion. Concealment mod is usually best anyway, but I recommend concealment mod over steering gears here. Can't stress that enough going back there quickly to propulsion mode is mandatory. And then it really goes without saying A gun main battery mod 3 is where you want to go. These are very slow shells. Well, they lose a lot of speed over a distance. They're only 127s. <clears throat> You've got 8, uh, 16, sorry, 127s. You can't fire them all at once. Uh, but they're dual purpose, as we've discussed before. And 127s means you can only pen 27 millimeters with EOP, and we don't have EOP, so we're not having a great time getting many pens unless you're broadside and we're hitting EP. And yeah, it's going to be very interesting with these 127s. I'll discuss it more later for detail. In terms of the armor, you have this weird uh, Death Star weakness in the back here. <laughs> you get that 20 millimeter plate where they can just shove that shell where the sun don't shine. <laughs> right in there but overall coated in 32 uh look at the bow here just straight 32 with that one exception there <clears throat> that one weakness at the back yes it does seem to go through so just be aware of that don't stare and tank you got to angle as best you can or bow tank indeed <clears throat> now uh superstructure is pretty basic uh, let's put this all off let's take off the bow because you covered that section superstructure quite big very large and uh, yeah, that's very large for a cruiser. So that is certainly something to note. You probably get penned even if you are angled because of the massive superstructure. Onto the casemate, um, pretty much coated in 50 millimeters, and, well 38 there, 50 and 50 deck. Flats, uh, again, 50 millimeters is generally easily penned, but you can, you're not gonna get over too much with that. So that would be eaten solid pens. That's very similar to the German armor scheme of the German decks, which means carriers can sit until you quite comfortably. So be aware of that. But they have to get through your mighty suite first. Uh, guns are ridiculously weakly armored, 10 millimeters, same sort of armament that destroyer guns get if you go to Club Air. Yeah, same sort of armor scheme. So your guns will be taken out frequently. Luckily, you have quite a few of them. So that is to your advantage, at least you have a couple guns that you can get, you can afford to lose. <clears throat> Taking that off, we've got our auxiliary room armor, which is our upper deck here. Coated in, well, kind of, 32 underneath, it's 21 at the front there, so when Yamato or plunging shell can plunge right in. Oh, there we go, it does go through the 32 then. So basically 32 coating and with a light chewy inside. <laughs> and then Citadel with a very weak upper deck, very weak upper deck. So plunging fire will absolutely murder the ship. So plunging shells, yeah, that's the biggest problem there because it's going through that. It's going through your thin, it's going straight through your 50, 50 millimeter plating. <clears throat> it's eating that crunchy bar that is your auxiliary room armor plating. And yeah, the Citadel itself is easily pinned. 32 millimeter Citadel is very low. 80 millimeters is just on the cusp of a cruiser. A little bit, a little bit just on the getting close to battleship territory, but not that high. It's still quite low for Citadel. Citadel is very weak, it's also exposed as well. So, look, it's going to be squishy. That's 100% certain from testing it and looking at the armor scheme. You can definitely tell it's going to be squishy. In terms of commanders, um, I recommend Andrew and Rue. No, I'm, I know I'm running a different guy here. I would cut with Kuznetsov because I like the bit, bit, bit more range. H shell damage trait is pretty useful. Ingenious is very great, reduces your splash damage, tail, uh, give, gives your modules a bit more H shell damage protection, and traverse speed and tells you when people are shooting you. Very useful when you're in a very fragile boat. So yeah, Ingenious is great, absolutely wonderful. Andrew Rue is very good just for that sake as well. 
Go for full speed ahead, bit more speed, bit more order shift, always nice. I like go all out because that 50% detectability or drop when you go engine boost is effectively your wee mini smokescreen. It's very useful. Sponge and Villages are also very good choices. I prefer actually go all out for the Colbert because the speed boosters are very handy. Acoustic Chamber, not that useful. You definitely want to steer clear. And Fleet Pat gives you a whopping four heals. So pretty nice. Also more speed boosts and more... Uh, Sonars. Please note the sonar. The engine boost does have a very lengthy cooldown, 180 seconds, and a regular time is 176. So you basically got 180 on, 180 off, 180 on, 180 off. So it's going to be pretty significant cooldown. So you need to be aware. You just be boost of caution. I recommend if you're more comfortable with cruisers, you could go with a straight Lemonier build. <clears throat> and also as well, because of these red cooldowns, Togo is not a bad inspiration slot because that cycling those heals and cycling the speed boost will help you out quite a bit. So Audrey Root is what I'd recommend for if you're starting out learning the ship. Lemonier is if you're very comfortable, I think. Go for the double fire pill, burn it down, igniter, go all out as you mentioned before, like our mini smoke screen, and then steer clear or fixated. You really want to improve that maneuverability of the bolt. And then again, fully packed over refill station. The sweet spot of this guy is about 16 and under. You don't want to really go over 16. I have got popped to uh, Kuznez off Inspiration as a result of not picking beyond range. But again, that's just my preference. If you want to run beyond range, that's up to you. But I think 18 kilometers is way in excess of what this boat's shell arcs are going to perform at. Realistically, you want 16, 16 and a half, 15. That's your sort of range you want to be shooting ships at. Another option, which is actually a very good solid option, is uh, Defournay, the base commander, which is using Burn It Down, Concealment, which is very useful. You could go Kuznezov, or you could go with the same inspiration as I got Pekawa. Uh, Valicious, very useful. A bit more speed. Reaching out, or steer clear. Very good options. You've got refill state. You unstoppable, prevents your engine being disabled. Will to rebuild, which can be useful. And again, fleet packed, which I'd probably go for. I haven't gotten leveled up as much, but I think he's a very useful build. A lot of my people, a lot of my friends who have run this build, I think it's a very strong build. And it's not a bad idea. So if you have Defernay leveled up and you feel comfortable with that, you can get a lot more concealment out of that. And give, concealment gives you a lot more options with cruisers generally. So you've got a lot of options for commanders here. If you're very comfortable on cruisers, Lemon, I think. <clears throat> if you're just getting to feel the boat, go for Rue. And if you're, you're pretty comfortable and you like concealment, we can get this down to about seven or eight, uh, nine to eight maybe, potentially. Or even just like, I think a solid nine or ten. <clears throat> And go deeper now. So yeah, hope this guy's helped you out a little bit longer on the exploration of commanders, but hopefully it was worth it. Now, into this game. Now, this game we actually did on stream. I'm going to be loading another Colbert game where it's more focused on the main aspect of this boat, which is kiting. But I thought this was a very interesting game to feature because uh, it really highlights the the potential when you manage to get a good position in Colbert. Now, Colbert is a very situational boat. Unless you are in the perfect position, you're not going to get much done in this boat. Um, as I said, 127s, you're not pinning that much. If we do the calculation, which is divided by the caliber by 6, it's 21.1, so about 20 millimeters of armor. So you're basically pinning DDs of your HE and superstructures, and that's pretty much it. Everything else at tier 7 and legendary tier will most likely bounce your H shatter your HE. Don't be, don't be afraid though, um, AP is quite spicy, it's again for 127, it's French AP, which basically means it has magic shells, so it's pretty darn good in that regard, the AP, again, it's very small calibre, so you have to get close for it to be very effective, but it will get results, so be sure to switch your shells when you have this fire set and the AP on the broadside. Again, as I said, 127s, you don't have access to AOP like the Americans and the Russians, uh, yeah, you don't have quarter pen like the Germans, and yeah, you're basically stuck like the, with the Japanese, Suzuya sort of thing, fire reliant ships, except the Suzuya is a little bit more, a little bit stronger with the 152s, I believe, 152s for Suzuya, I could be wrong with that, I think it's 152s, um, but yeah, you're less, you're more fire reliant than any, of, any other ship, uh, particularly legendary tier as well, so unless you have a lot of battleships to farm, you're gonna have a tough time in Colbert because the shell arcs are very slow. Uh, the shells, sorry, are very slow. You have very low caliber shells, which are very floaty, incredibly floaty shells. 
you your shells are very easy to dodge so cruisers could be able to get a decent result dodged in this but it's a stupid mistake on my part i ate this torpedo i basically should have just kept going my course and dodged it and i take it right on the right on the side of the nose like a champ yeah top quality play totally masterclass <laughs> sorry guys that's the only bit i think that's the only mistake i make though i think we'll have to see about that but um that is an idea there it's not that maneuverable uh, it is a little bit clumsy to boat for a cruiser but again that's just me dealing there thankfully it's got a lot of heals with our build so we can take advantage of that but as i said very fire reliant ship and incredibly situational if you don't have the right situation you'll get your butt kicked in this boat you will not get much done fortunately our sonar did spot up the zetchi mikazi and the minotaur took well advantage of that and just absolutely decimated it it will become to performing the, the Colbert because it's comparing its likes to the Minotaur, which is an incredibly strong ship in the right hands. I mean, I highlight that in the right hands. But uh, yeah, as you can see, look how far away he is. He's 14 kilometers, and that's a 10 second travel time. Pretty darn sizable. So the Minotaur has to be basically standing still. Uh, even slight maneuverability, the slight maneuvers will prevent us from getting solid hits. So as you can see, we've only landed three shells so far, and Again, it's very difficult to land these shells. You've got to get used to this uh, shell arc. Definitely not going to be an easy boat to master. But once you're once you're used to the shell arcs, you'll get a lot more solid hits. But again, against maneuver boats like a Minotaur or uh, basically cruisers and again even such DDs at range, you'll struggle to get much done. Battleships will be your bread and butter for this boat. It's really catered towards dishing out the fires. Oh, we got some reliable hits there on the Minotaur. We actually got some shatters on its Citadel belt or whatever it is. Again, only 21 millimeters of penetration. So realistically, you're you're going to shatter on even Minotaur as well, unless you switch to the AP. But we don't know his angle. We don't know what his, his, his precise angle just yet. So we can't really afford to switch to AP and get no results. We'd like to get the fire or break the modules, something like that. Definitely more useful. But yeah, if incredibly reliant on fires. Um, very faulty shells pretty tanky with the 32 but you could still get yourself really hurt by the plunging shells and your massive superstructure um you could be angled perfectly and a shell could come in and plunge right into your deck go through and just straight up citadel you or they could just pen your side citadel because it's exposed and get some really nasty hits on you like shooting a minotaur at this range here you're actually struggling to get too many hits here. We're switching the AP here because we have two potential Minotaurs here. It can hurt. Um, Bill on against the Minotaur, by the way, you will straight up lose because you have so much superstructure for the Minotaur to farm. It will just be too much, too brutal for you to handle. You lose your gun turrets, it'll be pretty rough. Fortunately though, we have given, we've got a smoke here. I believe that's from the Shimika, the, the DD, Shimikaze? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, Spokes from Duty, Alaska's popping in. Alaska is threat number one. Alaska AP is no joke. Um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely bonkers, the Alaska AP. Um, I'm really shocked. It's, it's, it's just so good, the AP. You can be fully bow tanking, and I've gotten almost death struck by an Alaska. <laughs> Because, yeah, pen angles don't exist for Alaska. You just, it just pens you no matter what the angle it feels like, honestly. <clears throat> so we really get, need to get the damage done. Yes, he is giving an angle here. We're just going to switch to HE, but we'll just fire what we got. Fire the HE salvo, switch back to AP. We really want to get as much damage done right now, right then to the Alaska. So that's why we're using AP. He's giving the broadside. We're going to push forward here. We're definitely going to get him out of the picture. We really need to get Alaska out of the picture because Alaska to her is at this angle. He could more than comfortably just straight up dev strike us. It's pretty disgusting. But we did go dark there because I thought we'd just have a little bit of cover. Tarpitz is giving us a little bit of bother here because he's actually keeping us spotted. We're angled against Tarpitz though. Tarpitz is no Alaska, which means we can actually bounce the shells. So we have to switch back to G, get more damage down in Alaska and see uh, what we can do. Now, <clears throat> Uh, Alaska is past that island, he is no longer under my control, no longer my concern, so let's try and burn down the turrets. This is what Colbert is essentially built for. It's built for kiting and built for burning down ships. That's all for all these magnitude of guns, these DPM, theoretical DPM, yeah, great, but look at the shatters, you're going to get a lot of shatters. Unless you hit the superstructure every time, you'll be getting some shatters. And with a 9 second travel time, only 10 kilometers roughly, 
it's gonna happen. You're gonna miss. Oh, you're gonna miss some shots. You have a lot of DACA, it's not always gonna connect all the same way you want it. That's why you're gonna get some chances. Even with the AG, unless you hit the superstructure, which could saturate and by the time you're, you're trying to kill the boat as well, you're gonna get much you're not gonna get much time. So when he gives the broadside after he's out too far, we switch to HP. A AP, not HP. Switch to AP. And he's used his damage control, he's got two fires burning. We're just going to give him some time to make sure his damage control is completely off cooldown. And then we're going to switch back to HE and then we're going to fire again. We could have switched back earlier, but honestly the AP will do a lot. And it's going to be sizable of how much we can do. Uh, the fires, again, we're firing a lot of shells and we're using, I think we're using the Lemon Air build. So this is an increased fire chance, which for a fire dependent bolt, the, the Colbert is, is recommended honestly. Um, if you're comfortable in cruises, definitely. If you're not, I still want you will get the job done. You just need to fire a little bit more, potentially. Again, we're just going to shoot the AP. You've got two fires set. We don't have a risk of third fire, just in case he uses his uh, fire, fire, fire skill. If he has it, we're just going to try and get as much as we can done with the AP while he's broadside. Make hay of the sun shine. As you can see, we're putting up a sizable amount of pens. We've hit the guy over 100 times. It's pretty darn spicy how much DACA we can put down. But the problem is the low caliber guns which means our theoretical DPM is very high, yes, but realistically it's not actually that high because the actual DPM is much lower because we simply can't pen as much as we want to pen. And that's just how she, that's all she wrote. Um, I guess I said before, it's a very underwhelming ship because, oh, we got the Arsenal Award on the top of this. Let's go. Uh, took quite a bit of farming there, but we got him. As I said, the Colbert is really good on burning down battleships, but besides the DACA, that is the fire setting fires, it really doesn't bring too much more to the table, unfortunately. Incredibly situation. We have to be in the right situation to get the best out of this ship. You have to be in a situation where you're pushing, you've got a great position, you can farm enemies endlessly, and they're not maneuvering too much to dodge your very easily dodgeable floaty shells that also cannot get much pen damage done because they're only 127s. We don't have access to EOP, even with EOP, pen 27, which is nice to have. But it, again, a tier 7, a legendary tier, things are going to have a lot more than 27mm plating. So that's something to note. But uh, yeah, incredibly situational. It can get the job done, but only in the right circumstances. The stars need to align. And you have to be in the right position at the right time in order for you to get a sizable damaging game. And even then, if RNG is not on your side, you can pretty much struggle to get much done because you're com almost completely reliant on fires and superstructure hits that's pretty much all you can do unless somebody gives you the broadside and you you can get some sizable damage done too but realistically close in you're going to struggle you can get rushed pretty easily you're dealt with pretty easily by pretty much any legendary ship uh yeah their dpm is is uh is better because they don't shatter basically that's pretty much it that's the be all and end all there they, they don't shatter and their armor schemes are usually a lot better but again you've got good potential but i think it's just thing it's just too situational the ship you have to be in the right situation in order for the, the, the ship to really perform and show its true colors and i went through quite a lot of games the colbert to try and get the cusp and the feel for the boat but i think i've got a good, pretty good grasp of it now and i think you really need to just be in the right situation at the right time Getting yourself in those situations is the aspect of the player's skill, of course, but uh, even if you play everything 100% right, you might not get the results you want. Just RNG, because it's, again, it's completely reliant on fires, and superstructure hits can only get you so much, depending on the situation in the boat. So yeah, instead of six capping there, but really wanted to get rid of Alaska, because he could really murder us and punish us. Uh, we can always come back and get this cap, and we're going to do as much as we can. Uh, DDs, who get close, are dead um yeah it's pretty much the same situation as alaska we're just going to keep firing here blind fire and a smoke we've got all this daca available to us so we're going to use it again utility we don't have radar we don't have torpedoes we have a little bit of a sonar more for protection and we have the speed boost so we can rush things but the only things we can comfortably rush are destroyers really that's pretty much that and uh broadside cruisers you know um <clears throat> We have the 32mm plating again, as I mentioned before, the superstructure is quite large, the plunging hits can do some sizable chunk damage to you as well. The Minotaur will just shred you even by one, so 
you got to be careful. Alaska, Minotaur, Wooster can now DPM you because he can pen you. <clears throat> he can also have access to EOP, which means he can pen a sizable amount of, uh, sizable amount of your armor scheme. And yeah, it's going to be pretty rough. Um, yeah, so all, pretty much all injury gear, gear cruisers will kill you at close range. Longer ranges, they can probably dodge your shells. So you need to be careful there. You definitely need to respect uh, the threats. You are certainly, you do have 32, 32mm platings and so forth, but you are still the cannon that is glass. And I would say you're a glass machine gun more than a glass cannon. Uh, you can do a lot, of a lot of stuff done, but you're more like a peace shooter as well, because you really don't shoot that much caliber guns here. This Suzuya here is, uh, well, you don't get broadside 8 kilometers, uh, but with this much DPM you have, the, the DACA you have, you can really kick out the damage and people make mistakes in front of you. Colbert is incredibly punishing on cruisers that just walk up to you and give you broadside, but again, assuming equal, equal player skill level, the Colbert will absolutely just will straight up lose to most fights. If they can't deal with you by one, then you might win, but then again, all they need to do is just break your guns, which are destroy your guns, so very easily broken. I know you've got a, quite a few, you've, you've got four, but it really didn't take too long to repair. He's already broken one, he's not even trying to do it. His HE will just break my guns and do some lots of problems there. And Suzuya, if he had a little bit more time, he already had me on double fire and he was getting a lot more out. He was getting a lot more damage out there. If he angled and kited away, he could have used his torpedoes, he could have even rushed us, and it could have been a whole different story. But there we go. 150k, got the Arsenal Award, 3.2 base, and I'll be popping up another Colbert game soon where it's more focused on kiting aspect of it. One of the guys who comments in this video as well has a chance to win this giveaway, so just comment below and anything you want, preferably your gamer tag, and I will get back to you with the final code for my giveaway. Have fun, guys, I'll catch you later.